Hi, this is Dr. Donald Pelto, and I want to talk to you today about the uh, some of the common reasons for ankle pain. Uh, many times we get patients in the office and they have pain around their ankle, and we have to let them know that there's a lot of structures around there. There's a, well, there's a lot of different causes. So let's start uh, looking at uh, the most common one that we see in the office. This is an ankle sprain. Uh, a sprain can happen either on the inside or on the outside of your ankle. Uh, typically the outside sprains are the most common and if you twist your ankle and you cause this injury there are a few ligaments that can become injured. Uh, one of the most common ones is this anterior talofibular ligament where you see it's torn. That's a very very common one. This tends to be the first one that causes the tear, causes a little bit instability and swelling around the ankle. If this one is torn then the next one that tends to be torn in order would be the calcaneofibular ligament those are the two that give your body the support and if you keep on rolling it outward you could also then break one of the bones in the ankle so an ankle sprain needs to first of all be determined if it's not a, um, a break in the ankle if it's just a sprain or if it's a break uh, knowing a little bit about the anatomy is important and you have the swelling and the bruising you can see the skin is tenting here uh, if you have pain even without weight bearing, it's usually due to the swelling because the swelling pulls on the different types of nerves in the area. Uh, but first of all, it's important to get, if you're having this pain that you can't walk on on the ankle, to get an x-ray. If you can't walk on it, we may be considering a, a break in one of the bones uh, in the ankle region. So that's an ankle sprain. There's also something called a sinus tarsi syndrome. Uh, if you have a deep pain inside uh, the, the ankle region, especially if you can press right in this area here, this is the area of the sinus tarsi right here, you can see it. Uh, it actually is underneath the talus and above the calcaneus. Inside of there, there's some ligaments that are in there, and there's a joint that's between there, the, the subtalar joint, the area underneath the talus, it's called the subtalar joint, and that can become painful. Uh, there can be some impingement problems where something gets kind of trapped in there. Uh, a treatment of choice for this would be uh, a cortisone injection in the area. That can be helpful uh, for patients. Uh, if that doesn't work, an ankle brace can be helpful or a walking boot or maybe even some physical therapy in that area and anti-inflammatories. Anti That's called the sinus tarsi syndrome. Uh, ankle arthritis. Uh, ankle arthritis is, as you can tell, where there's breaking down of the ankle joint and there's reducing of the cartilage that's on top of the bone. When you have less cartilage on there, when the bones move, they rub on each other and it becomes very painful. And one bad type of arthritis is called the Taylor Dome lesion. You can see here on the dome of the, the, the talus, there's a little defect or a piece that can kind of pop out. And that needs to be evaluated on x-ray, sometimes MRI or CT. Uh, the treatment of choice for this uh, would be to initially try to immobilize the area with a walking boot. And if that doesn't work, try a cortisone injection, and then ultimately, if needed, uh, surgery to remove this little piece, or even as a last resort, if, if bracing or some type of a, an Arizona brace or a brace to restrict the ankle movement doesn't work, then to actually fuse the ankle joint. Now looking at uh, peroneal tendon injuries, there are a lot of injuries that can happen. People think, well, it's my ankle that hurts. Well, a lot of times there's some uh, tendons that can hurt. The tendons on the outside of your ankle are called the peroneal tendons. Uh, here you can see the peroneus brevis, okay? And then there's also the peroneus longus that runs underneath it. The peroneus brevis inserts right here at the base of this fifth metatarsal right here. And the peroneus longus goes underneath the foot. And these are typically torn around the ankle ligament. So if you sprain, for example, this ankle ligament that we talked about, this anterior talofibular ligament or the calcaneal fibular ligament, then the next part to be torn would be the uh, peroneal tendons. These can be torn, that may need to be uh, re-sutured or re-corrected uh, there to make them work better. Uh, so here are the peroneal tendons, here's the tear in the tendon. Another common problem is on the inside. This is called the posterior tibial tendon. This can be a tendonitis or even a tendon tear. Once again, this comes down. A portion of it inserts into the navicular tuberosity, and then another portion inserts on the bottom of the foot. And this can be torn. This is very common for people that have a flat foot. If they have a flat foot, they collapse in, and this posterior tibial tendon can become very painful uh, around this area in the middle of the foot. Very, very common problem, especially people that have a flat feet. And they, they talk about a sign here, the too many toes sign. So if you can see your toes on the outside, that can be a, a problem with this condition of posterior tibial tendonitis. If this is painful, initially we try a walking boot to immobilize your foot uh, or a cast. And then after that works, we try to 
put the heel back in the appropriate position over here with an orthotic and if needed a surgical repair of the tendon. How about tarsal tunnel syndrome? Uh, this is a, a problem that, that's quite common when people get numbness and tingling in their feet, uh, especially if they have a flat foot. Once again, as you can see, if the foot pronates or goes out, it's putting a lot of added strain to the tendons and also the nerves on the inside. If you look at the inside here, there, there is some flattening out and some inflammation of this nerve, that's why it shows it in the red, and it can become very, very painful in there. Uh, Initially, we try treating it with orthotics or some type of an AFO device. If that doesn't work, then there can be a tarsal tunnel release, which actually we cut through this, this retinaculum here and then loosen up the tendon uh, and also the nerve in the area. And sometimes there can be some type of, um, of a mass in there that can cause that problem and cause uh, the compacting of the nerve. Uh, how do we treat ankle injuries? Initially we get an exam, whether it be an x-ray or an MRI or even a nerve study if you're dealing with one of those nerve injuries. We look at the architecture of the foot. If there's a lot of flattening in the foot, as you can see in this, we may need an orthotic uh, to start out. We look if there's any breaks or any other problems. Uh, cold therapy is, is always recommended, except with, with nerves. Sometimes nerves don't react as well to cold therapy and you have to use heat. Uh, Anti-inflammatories can be helpful. Uh, new shoes or even some type of a brace. A lot of times if there's a tendonitis or not a tear, we can use trigger point tools to uh, soften up the uh, muscles in the back of the area. These are some of the tools that we use. Um, sometimes injections are helpful, especially with the sinus tarsi and some of these other tendonitis. We try not to inject uh, cortisone in into the area of a torn tendon. It may cause fr further harm, but certainly in a joint, uh, it can be helpful, especially in the ankle joint. And then physical therapy may be needed. Needed. Orthotics can be helpful, especially if there's a lot of pull on the nerve or on the tendon, and that can be something very helpful. So as you can see, orthotics can help kind of lift up the heel and move it on the outside uh, as well. Uh, using an AFO, this can be very helpful for a lot of these conditions. By restricting the movement in the ankle joint, uh, it can help not put as much pressure on the ankle, not put as much pressure on the tendons, or even on the nerve on the side. So an AFO can be very helpful. Initially, to reduce the pain, though, we can use a cam boot. This is just a walking boot uh, to reduce the pain, make it more comfortable. And if you need some additional support, most people feel good in a compression stocking or even just some more support from this cast sock. Uh, this is called an uniboot that we can put on there. This is like a soft cast that can help people. Uh, so the, the walking boot may be needed, especially uh, if it's a... Uh, not getting better and as well we need to talk about surgery and that would be the next thing to talk about surgery about this. Hope you found this helpful. If you'd like more information I did put a uh, foot pain toolkit that has all this information and more at drpelter.com. Just put your email in there and I'll send you all that information.